is that there are a really don't care. It's just a weird big at the end if if you follow this, he is trying to establish the the primary building blocks for authoritarianism. Faction, right? You can hear some distant, distant echoes of this stuff. Here is, uh, he goes on to say that, uh, that Democrats slash libertarians, apparently most of the libertarians are in the Democratic Party. <laughs> Tucker's. Uh, <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a lot of classical liberals. In the and, um, and social conservatives have had, um, have had, Similar, have had sort of uh, two critiques that have come from a different place but it ended up in the same uh, area, which is that uh, economics and uh, culture are separate. Here, play number two. Yet the pathologies of modern rural America are familiar to anyone who visited downtown Baltimore in the 1980s. Stunning out of wedlock birth rates, high male unemployment, a terrifying drug epidemic. Two different worlds, similar outcomes. How did this happen? Well, you'd think our ruling class would be deeply interested in knowing the answer, but mostly they're not. They don't have to be interested. It's easier to import foreign labor to take the place of native-born Americans who are slipping behind. Nice. But Republicans now represent rural voters. They ought to be interested. And here's a big part of the answer. Male wages declined. Manufacturing, a male-dominated industry, all but disappeared over the course of a generation. than women, women generally don't want to marry them. Big populations, this causes a drop in marriage, a spike in out of wedlock births, and all the familiar disasters that inevitably follow. Alcohol abuse, higher incarceration rates, fewer families form to the next generation. This is not speculation, it's not propaganda from the evangelicals. It's social science. We know it's true. Which people know it best of all? That's why they get married before they have kids. So give that model works. <laughs> but increasingly, marriage is a luxury only the affluent in America can afford. And yet, and here's the bewildering and infuriating part, those very same affluent married people, the ones who make virtually all the decisions in our society, are doing pretty much nothing to help the people below them get and stay married. <laughs> What have you done, Sam? Uh, <laughs> this whole thing is a sham. It's a sham. Um, you know, when are you gonna find Matt and Michael some wives? Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. Part of it is that um, a problem doesn't get real until it starts affecting white people, according to Tucker. Uh, that's one of the problems. And his, uh, his whole marriage calculation seems a little bit muddled. Um, it is, uh, having kids is expensive. There's some things that we could do uh, in terms of, um, broadly speaking, some government programs, but we're gonna wait until we get to the end where he announces like, Apparently, there's no way to help those people. There's, right. There's no. There isn't like a whole obvious set of policies that would take no, that it's like problem a, off of the there's table. There's no way. There's no example in the world. Well, it's completely. Right. We have no idea how to get there. We have no clue. Well, this is what's so creepy about Tucker Carlson because there's always a grain of truth in what he's saying, but then his prescription to solve the problems is like way the wrong way. Now, but even there, it remind, you know what that actually reminds me of? Do you remember Waiting for Superman? Yes. Right? So that's that's like peak Obama neoliberal school propaganda. And the, the major thing in that movie, they say, is it's, it's like, it's not that Scarsdale had expensive, great public schools because they're all loaded. It's, and, you know, the South Bronx had schools that were in tougher shape because of class and race and redistribution. It was that Scarsdale has amazing neighborhoods because the schools were awesome. And it just happened, like he's reverse engineering the after effect of the social problem to be the cause. And they did that in the Obama era. 
Right. In, in and terms that of was and with schools. Everybody accepted that kind of delusional second order thinking. Now, here is, um, this clip is a little bit less relevant, but it's a lot more fun uh, in, in this monologue. And it's also sort of like what I think is going to keep, um, it's, it, I, it's hard to know what Tucker's up to when you hear this, this clip. This is clip number three of this, yes. Speak out against the ugliest parts of our financial system. Not all commerce is good. Why is it defensible to loan people money they can't possibly repay? Or charge them interest that impoverishes them? Payday loan outlets in poor neighborhoods collect 400% annual interest. Are we okay with that? We should not be. Libertarians tell us that's how markets work. Consenting adults making voluntary decisions about how to live their lives. Okay. But it's also disgusting. All right, pause it. <laughs> yeah, he's totally nailing it. I mean, he's totally nailing this part. Now, his four-part series on the way that Mick Mulvaney was pulling apart the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was devastating. <laughs> Unfortunately, they never aired. Uh, you got to be a deep, deep Tucker member to get access to that material. They, they have a special <laughs> Patreon where they log that out. Um, and, you know, there, there was uh, a lot of inroads made, uh, both um, uh, statutorily in terms of regulation about that, I don't remember him complaining about it, but uh, it's nice to know that he's there now, now that there's no way uh, any of that is going to be held to account, at least under this administration. But uh, watch where he goes here. This is an interesting term. Okay, but it's also disgusting. <laughs> if you care about America, you ought to oppose the exploitation of Americans, whether it's happening in the inner city or on Wall Street. Care what happens in India. And by the way, if you really loved your fellow Americans, as our leaders should, it would break your heart to see them high all the time, which they are. It's <laughs> especially when you are smoking weed constantly. Yeah. <laughs> new technology has made it all but odorless, but it's everywhere. And that's not an Pause accident. It. No, wait a second. We've got to go back a little bit. So we have a massive opioid epidemic in this country. That is a function of a pharmaceutical company that, and the entire uh, supply chain uh, delivery mechanism that was corrupt to the core, uh, illicit, and uh, just beyond reprehensible. They should all be literally charged with manslaughter, if not maybe second <laughs> But somehow, somehow it's the odorless pot that we were mentioning. Can I just say, though, following Tucker, I look out on all of you and feeling the love we have for you, I'm incredibly sad. <laughs> really high on you. All right, just go back just a little bit because Matt Leg is smoking weed right now. Matt Leg makes me depressed every hour. <laughs> especially our boys, are smoking weed constantly. We may not realize that because new technology has made it all but odorless, but it's everywhere, and that's not an accident. Once leaders understood they could get rich from marijuana, marijuana became ubiquitous. In many places, tax-hungry politicians have legalized or decriminalized it. Former Speaker of the House John Boehner now lobbies for the marijuana industry. He's got a lot of fine with that. All of it is better for you than alcohol, they tell us. Maybe. Who cares? He could tell you that. <laughs> John Boehner could definitely vouch. Yeah. That's why when you see Boehner now, he's not weeping anymore. He's the <laughs> eve of his emotional state out. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, you tell us. Maybe. Who cares? Talk about missing the point. Try having dinner with a 19-year-old who's been smoking weed. She's <laughs> <laughs> flat. Trapped in their own heads. Do you want that for your kids? I try doing a show every day with the me. Trapped in his own head. How many times is Tucker having dinner with our high night to go? Inquiring minds want to know. I know what he does in his free time. Well, I mean, he could have a night. It's conceivably as a 19 year old kid. I bet you he does. But, like, just. Deal with it at home, dude. <laughs> this segment is dedicated to you tonight, son. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm done talking talk about the fucking gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> you. Do you people have any idea what it's like 
how kids fight over a beanbag chair. <laughs> That's what my past two days have been about. They eat all your snacks. They both have one. I'm out of the house. Right. Just so I don't have to hear them yell about the beanbag chair. <laughs> <laughs>